back for the next open. All right, here we go. Switching gears. We have our winners semifinals, a rematch of last week where G1 defeated Space Station 3-0, a team that never got anything less than second last year, finding a little bit of difficulty and trouble. And I got to point out, Hoaxer, the new coach for Gamers First, previous coach for Space Station. You have to imagine he might just have the notebook on this team. It certainly seems like Hoaxer would know how to lead Gamers First against the team that he previously had coached. The triple kill comes through. The oddball secured by Gamers First. Space Station with 11 seconds of milking that objective time, but Gamers First are stealing back the lead. The next round of camo is seconds away from spawning in, and you have to think that these are the timely slays from Gamers First to secure that power up. And this is the way it usually goes. If you grab that first oddball, it's either little milk in that five to 10 second range or 30 plus as we see Space Station kind of almost bait themselves for that 11 seconds. On the, on the flip side, you have Gamers First taking the milk instead reaching just about that 30 second mark but space station do a great job answering back and now they have 20 and rolling looking to tie if not possibly take the lead here against you one shock rifle in the hands of penguin sitting on bat ledge there's four players from gamers first at the elevator and whirlpool side it looks like that's where the push is coming through penguin sends the fight but he is taken down he does set up the kill make it the double for ego ego looking for the triple has damage onto the third player but oh no the unfortunate timing of using up so much ammo that you're caught in the middle of a potential a triple overkill because of the need to reload your weapon now fortunate there for eco smith that errant shot took down suspector and snowballed down to a few more slays for space station as they do in fact regain that lead regain the oddball control and they rotate it here over to c with eco shock rifle in hand this is going to be so difficult for g1 to break through fortunately eco smith running out of snipe ammo running out of life as well as he goes down two on two the reset is well timed and look at that by space station they get the reset they get the instant oddball grab as well that is a perfect play from the elabite led ssg SSG with the perfect response now have doubled up that score. They passed the halfway mark. Stellar barely misses on the first round of the plasma pistol, but he has enough damage to get the kill and the assist. Once again, it's Eco on the cleanup. Eco is 10 and 5 right now. Eco is going off in this game as Space Station are 30 seconds away from winning this first round. But a little bit of a play ball there as they toss the oddball out, looking for a round of slays to get back to maybe that final chunk of time that they would need. Yeah, and just like that 1-0 lead we saw in the King of the Hill game previously, this 70 to 27 lead opens up that same opportunity for SSG where you know, they, have to, they don't have to stress or press for that extra oddball time. They can play it out if they feel some pressure and uh, a little bit of push here from G1 as we see that from SSG. They handle it handily, taking down many, many from the gamers first and calmly, coolly, and collectively grab that oddball once again as they're now on the break of taking a convincing round one. 92 seconds and counting. Bound gets another slay. And at this point, every slay just buys you two, three seconds, and that all space station needs. They hit that full 100, led by Eco. Ends round one, 13 and five. Now, wait, Eco right now is on pace for a 26 and 10 game. I'm not saying that's like, you know, on the script, but it is the potential if Eco can pop off again. Yeah, you got Eco popping off like he's bound right here, and that spells trouble for G1 as they're going to have to find an answer here in the opening break or their momentum. And most importantly, the sandbox will continue to roll in SSG's favor. Massive killer there on Stellar. A little bit of an answer back kill there from Suspector, but Penguin is able to sneak away with the camo, but not for long. Suspector making huge plays when G1 needs it most. Spectre did shut down the camo, but that camo is burned. So even though Gamers First, uh, it looks like they're playing a, a round of defense, right? They're stopping the camo control, which is the first step. But how do they turn this around into momentum in their favor? So Spectre staying alive, hopefully at one HP in a dream, hugging this corner. He's peeking out to get information. He knows there's players here at Gold Pipe, so he's going to rotate back. Both players are one shot. Kill, I'm sorry, the assist onto one, looking for that double assist. It's going to come through. Who do has the shot right? and Falcated is watching his back. Pivotal win there from Falcated as that keeps it 
a 2-2 game and momentarily numbers advantage for gamers first but most importantly oddball advantage for gamers first as if falcated it went down there likely rotates and switches possessions to ssg instead you have that 30 and rolling that milk that good start you're looking for if your gamers first needing a bounce back here in round two and they had a good chunk of time in the early stages of round one and this yeah. is the stage where space station really went off with the kills with the objective time boo boo jubo needs to win this 1v1 and he wins the piv it was a clean kill on the whiplash as he stops bound from grappling but the oddball however being lost boo boo jubo cannot overextend because eco has that crossfire great assist coming through great recognition from boo boo to not rush before his team was ready all right camo up but it looks like boo boo doo boo and the rest of gamers first are gonna elect to push out that c spawn and potentially send penguin off the map with that oddball oh a chance there for boo boo doo boo to potentially dang da take down penguin before he was able to reset but he gets the play ball double instead kill. and then on the back side of that eco smith with the well-timed double kill it's all ssg again after that great start we saw gamers first get the first 30 yeah. seconds but in both rounds one and two it's been all ssg ever since yeah it, it's it's almost a deja vu situation here Mikowski, where we're seeing space station on the response at almost the same juncture in both rounds and so now what we need to see is gamers first with a change of strategy because this yep. is where they lost round one but sab has has the full camo not burned this time i want to see how sab can utilize this camo it hasn't been sab's game to this point but now with a melee looking for the cleanup a little bit of a grenade kill on that one the double kill, double kill. all this time though space station continuing to hold the objective sab only has a few seconds left on that camo to get the positioning he grenades he melees he gets an assist and just like we saw in the previous round 71 to 28 i think this is exactly the score it was last round when we saw that well-timed play ball from space station will it lead to slays as well three down for each squad important frag grenade oh and it lands on suspector that's going to open up the uh, the oddball opportunity for ssg once again penguin literally body blocking those shots as he jumps up to bat ledge to allow bound to rotate back with the oddball only time for one push here from gamers first and sab winning that kill that's key a remote detonation credited uh -oh. to suspector now the shock rifle is starting to snowball in the exact time and direction that gamers first needed boo boo doo boo with that shock rifle looking to rotate here along the long haul side falcated it's gonna watch this bait watch this wait Boo -boo -doo -boo. he's gonna back up oh he almost didn't execute it there a little bit of a missed timing there that was i think the idea there boo boo doo boo didn't even uh, a bonus there would have been to get the headshot on the shock rifle but i think really there you just wanted to pull in that ssg roster towards the long haul where you had falcated waiting it's a missed opportunity here for gamers first when you did every single one to count Suspector is winning pivotal kill after pivotal kill. Uh, Suspector is honestly the reason why Gamers First are still in the fight. The, the camo went there to Eco. The play ball came through. But the Gamers First, with only 15 seconds left for SSG to take the game, they don't have time to, to play off of the reset. They need to hold on to control. This camo nearly spent for Eco, and he's getting away. He rounds the corner. The grapple play from Falcated is the only thing that can stop this from being a win but Falcated needs to stay alive. The push from SSG is not going to be far behind. Penguin rotating through Mangler door. Falcated once again with the grapple play to clutch up and get the back smack. Yeah, I almost feel like that should be the deadly catch medal. As we saw Falcated catch the back of Penguin, back smack him with the grapple hook. And G1, because of Falcated and the grapple play, still has life. Falcated looking to lock down the top A side, has number support. Oh no, but all no. four go down for G1. It's another huge answer back from Space Station, as it looks like they will, in fact, take game one. Oh, Eric Grenade. That's not going to be enough. 100 on the scoreboard. 2 0 in game one for SSG, as they look really strong to start the series very strong decisive plays and there were moments that g1 showed why they are that number three seed why they can compete at the level with space station but ultimately going down two to zero is all that the scoreboard is going to reflect a great opening game here from ssg and you know round one it was the eco show i'm sure on these replays we're going to catch some great highlights yeah and here's the thing masterful work from ssg because all of the slays that G1 was able to get this game, they were all bait, right? They were all yeah. kills that weren't at the right time and place to 
accumulate that oddball time. In fact, at one point, you had SSG rotate the oddball all the way over to gold. Meanwhile, Gamers first is slaying everyone out on the seaside, but that doesn't yeah. matter when the oddball is on the overside, uh, the, on the other side at gold. That's all bait there, and G1 took it. They fell for the bait, and I want to see what this adjustment is going to look like in game two. We were really looking for an adjustment in round two, and I think that th there was there were moments of it. I mean, most notably was the grapple plays that saved the day here with Falcade. And first, he gets a grapple play to stop the oddball carrier. He gets another grapple play to secure the oddball. So there were moments where you saw G1 making those mid-game adjustments, but after going down game one, now they need to make a mid-series adjustment. And I just wish we had the cub to hear what that conversation sounds like, to hear what the strats are, because game two is all about team strategy as we head to Slayer Empyrean, locking down spawns, controlling power weapons, and which of these two teams is going to have that team cohesion to pull it off? Yeah, and on the flip side of that teamwork and cohesion magic on an individual level, I'm looking at Suspector here to be the catalyst to bring G1 back in this series. He is incredible here on Empyrean Slayer. Had 14 in a row, just barely missed the running riot on land against Native White in pool play. So if anyone's going to have an individual performance to bring gamers first back, I'm looking at Suspector. Was that the pool play series that went to the game five? That was in game five to, to secure oh. the, the first place in pools for gamers first. So this is a little bit of familiarity. This is a, a safe space for them as they need it. Down 1-0 to SSG. And it's not even for me the down 1-0. It's the eye test that SSG passed with flying colors. Gamers first, really only able to get that first 30 seconds of milk, which let's be honest, that's a great job. That's very difficult to be the first on the board with those yeah. 30 seconds, yeah. but... That was only the big, that was only the uh, the start of the game, right? The mid game was all SSG, the end game all SSG, and now it's going to be all on G1 to win this game too. Or you're putting your back up against the wall, needing a reverse sweep against a team that is unlikely to give up those unforced errors that usually lead to something like a reverse sweep here. So this is one of those like I, I, I say this a lot, but this is like almost like a game five here for G1 because they cannot afford to go down 0-2. Well, this is the map that they can do it on. It's going to be that Slayer Empyrean. We got a little window picture-in-picture uh, picture here. The other semifinal matchup is FaZe versus Native White. And it looks like they're heading into that game one that ranked us, uh, sorry, the oddball rather on recharge. But on the match we're focused on right now, SSG versus G1, we talked about these teams and some of that history. And last week it was a 3-0 win by G1. And we already know they're not going to be able to repeat that here as SSG take that first match and it almost leads you to wonder are they going to reverse it is it going to be a 3-0 the other way are we seeing back-to-back -back weeks of an even 3-3 well, three to three from team to team or does g1 find their footing here maybe it is it's a specter that can lead the way well this is kind of an interesting thought to have on that note magic but I, you could almost argue that the 3-0 last week for g1 was uh, the, the worst result they could have asked for which we have another faded comment from mikowski probably everyone's saying <laughs> in the chat but here's why i'm saying this because the 3-0 kind of wrote the yeah. book on what SSG needed to do differently and adjust from week to week to come out in this series and look much different. We're seeing that here. And I, to go even further and carry on the conversation even more, that's one of the reasons why I don't think Optic is playing in this tournament. They don't want to give up the book on how to play against them. So while the strategy is to give up the points, they're not giving up the intel either. So really important kind of almost like meta within the meta discussion here as it relates to these teams and whether or not they compete and how they bounce back despite having a, a poor performance in the previous week. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting that you bring up that idea of optic and not wanting to give away any of their strategy because when we're looking at the overall picture of HCS, you have the top two teams a, a little bit of a distance there between with optic phase and then there are i would say three teams fighting for that third place spot that's ssg that's g1 and native red i would put up there as well after last week's win and now in the lower bracket unfortunately for them i want to see how they can do through that lower bracket run but i think that this matchup between ssg and g1 it carries some weight beyond just this open series yeah and if you thought streets had a lot of sandbox to work with this might be the new king of the hill as it relates to sandbox in the hcs you've got overshield heat wave rockets sniper we saw the repulsor from uh, i believe it was world 2 deflecting one of those rockets back at hcs charlotte to win his game uh, his team that game two slayer as we now hop on board here with pet penguin fighting for those crucial opening rockets and he gets away with it but has low shields to work with. 
Low shields is all you need if you can find a corner to milk your life. And he heard something. Maybe it was a call out from Eco that Boo Boo Dooku was rotating there to pit Whoa. with the overshield. And it was the focus fire between the rocket and Stellar Snipe that instantly obliterated that overshield. Yeah, that's the most interesting part about this map to me is that dichotomy of do we go for overshield or, or do we play for rockets? There we see gamers first take the overshield, Space Station takes the rockets and then uses a direct, almost headshot with the rocket to take down what I believe was a full overshielded Boo Boo yeah. Doo Boo. Great start here for SSG. Up by four, a full team wipe. And if this one extends, we know this map has a propensity to snowball. G one's gotta watch out. Oh, that snipe, that body shot connects and Boo Boo Doo Boo with the combined fire cleans up the kill with the BR. These are huge wins because SSG had that early lead. If they can also build onto it by locking down that sniper side of the map, it spells even more trouble in that snowball effect. So now G1 winning a couple of kills, holding onto this sword side of the base. Now they have tied up the game and they get their pick of where to control the map. Uh, there's a bit of that repulsor action deflecting a grenade that would have taken down Falcate. He goes down ultimately, but a great job there from Gamers first. Down a team wipe, notching this one back up. SSG now with the slight one kill lead. You have Bound here looking for some intel on that sword side. SSG knows Boo Boo Doo in there, and Penguin's gonna go for him. Melee's out, and not enough damage there for Boo Boo Doo as Penguin gets the first hands on Boo Boo and takes him down three-point lead here for space station you can see that their strategy is definitely to lock g1 into the needle side spawns penguin rotating over to sniper tower he's looking for the backs he's gonna see two players from g1 rotating long haul but if he's not careful there's one more player spawning at the back of needles it's sad that could find his back instead Penguin doesn't overextend. He holds his ground and Stellar fills in. They have the spawn lock, but Falcated with the pivotal kill to help break them out of the trap. Penguin again playing his role, going for those rockets, just like we saw at the opening of the match. But instead, it's Boo Boo Doo Boo. Not playing for that overshield, playing for oh, a rocket here instead, as G1 completely elects to give up possession of that overshield so long as they get rockets. Will the decision making play off? as we have Falcated inching closer and closer towards that overshield. I think it was Stellar who got away with the overshield, so we'll see if a little rocket, there's not gonna be a rocket overshield combo happening, but it might be the heat wave instead. Stellar rounds the corner. There is a heat wave in the hands of- Oh! And now Stellar went, no wait, hold on. Falcated lift? Unbelievable. Stellar had overshield, but Falcated had that heat wave as wow. he melted down the overshield. And G1 now have their first lead of the game up to. I, I feel like, you know how teams can be in a blender off of spawns? I feel like I'm mentally in a blender after that play because it looked like Stellar, you got some overshield to work with. You have the trap, but no, heat wave melts overshield, melted the, the health of Stellar. He goes down. And now we see for the first time gamers first with a bit of a lead just two point advantage bound is in a cheeky little position holding onto that ledge we have snipers on either side eco sniper is full so is sabs nearly kitty cornered opposite corners of the map yeah here we have ssg and coach elamite cranking down the pace of this game looking to use a little bit of slow play to come back in this one down just two and it looks like gamers first is going to respond to this slowdown by slowing down themselves they're going to let Space Station take that first peek because Sab has the sniper, but he misses on the shot. The damage on Sab is going to allow SSG here to push up. They got a boom block on the long haul. That's going to help tremendously as two go down for gamers first. And the tidal wave for SSG is on. And Sab is on the run. Look at how he scurries over to the sniper side. He knows this push is coming from long haul. A trade of kills comes through. Space Station have the lead back. Eco with the body shot and the position at the back of the base, but Sab hits that headshot. He doesn't get cleaned up. Now Eco is burning off some extra ammo because he is in the enemy territory. He doesn't want to give up the power weapon, but Sab shuts him down. I don't think that sniper gets played off the map. No, that's going to be two snipers in the hands of G1 with, I believe, two snipes Ooh. to work with on Ooh, the other no, side. No, two no, snipes no. connecting on this side of the map as Sab earns the double kill. Well, he gets no scalp on Penguin. It's the body shot. Takes him down, and now the pressure is all on SSG. Gets out of the lift trap. I was nervous for a minute there, but Sab Snipes have been hitting their target. The rocket repulse right back! Oh! Boo -boo -boo -boo! The perfect repulsor returned to sender!
We teed it up. It happens once again. Repulsor, rock, paper, scissor. Repulsor wins against the Rockets once again. Suspector with that overshield, but that gets baby down immediately. And at this point, he's just lucky to escape with his life, but I don't think he's going to stay alive for much longer. No, Penguin earns the double kill and brings SSG back to within three. I'm still catching my breath after that return to center textbook of a how repulsor can counter the rockets wow. and the timing couldn't have been better Fubuju has two players double in front of him kill. he's gonna find one he's gonna find two had a little bit of team fire to help him on that double kill but now he doesn't get his shield back and penguin has time and time again been finding those perfectly timed slays Oh, and it's the perfect time for each of these two teams to have a sniper duel. Falcated with a sniper on the G1 side of the map. Penguin looking to protect that banana side. And oh, the flank is on. The recognition. There must have been a comp from the snipe side of the map to let him know that the flank was on. But no, they don't have the flank. I thought they did. The shots go into the back of Penguin as he goes down. And look at that. Shots go into the back of Boo Boo Boo. But the positioning and timing is there for him to get away. We're in this game Slayer now, Mikowski. Both teams are past that 30 kill mark or at the 30 kill mark, 30 to 33. Gamers first have the slim three point lead. The drop wall might have just saved Boo Boo Doo life as Bound fires off one snipe to be blocked by that wall. He's looking for Falcon at the top of Sniper Tower. He fires off one round. Half of his ammo is still left in that gun, but Falcon wins the kill. Falcon at 13 and six. And now Bound is checking his own corner because there's some call-ups, there's some comps to know that two players from Gamers First are rotating behind. You had Sab performing with that sniper. That's what brought Gamers First back and helped them build the lead. Now you have Falcated with the sniper building even further on it as he misses a crucial shot there on Penguin. Is that could have extended it to a six kill game. That sort of linchpin moment where two kills determine whether it's a two team wipe game or a one team wipe game as this one is back to within five. And I got to give credit to SSG. It, it, it really eye test wise looks like all gamers first in the feed and yeah. the in the POV. But SSG has done a great job to stay in it. It's been Penguin time and time again. The double kill, the clutch kill. Now Stellar finally getting used. The Rockets get the double on the other side of the map. Oh. The stick comes through. Huge plays here from SSG to not only utilize the Rockets, but also eliminate the overshield use. And just like that, they're only three points down. Rockets are spent. Overshield is spent. It's going to come down to just the snipe plays. Yeah, but that trade was huge there Ooh, for Gamers snipe. First. As Penguin hits another snipe. But imagine, though, if that trade wasn't secured for Gamers First, this would be a lead for SSG. Will it be a lead nonetheless? No, we're tied. 41-41. Less than four minutes to go. Penguin taking the gamers first. Snipe tower. And they're going to force all of these spawns on the Mangler side. A blender opportunity here for SSG. If gamers first doesn't play well off their back foot, they're going down 0-2 in this series. Sab gets a pick. Maybe their chance to get out of the blender. But look at the push here. The trap. Eco rotated right around behind. The distraction play came in. Gamers first. Still caught in this blender. Bound at the back of wow. the tower is taken down. Penguin is staying alive. Eco gets a kill. SSG are up by one, but all the fight is in the back of Gamers first base. They don't have any chance off the respawn to reposition. They need to get right back into the fight. They're staying neck and neck, but now Space Station winning another round of slays have eked out a two-point lead. And it was that snipe tower possession on the gamer's first side of the map. And look at this bound now with flag possession. He might even steal gamer's first snipe, but oh it might gosh. even it might not no even matter. Way. Yes, it will. 48-47. Just as it looked like SSG had a glance to close the door. Gamers first grab that sniper rifle and now have a chance. Being caught back in their needle spawn. Gamers first were able to play off of that back foot, but what wow. they gave up in the process is the lead in this game. They're down by just one 48 47. Snipers on the side of Stellar and Boo Boo Doo Boo. We might see a counter snipe, but look at all the space station. Three players are rotating. Sword Bound is the only player slightly separated from the rest of the team looking for a pick. Oh, and at this point, 25 seconds for both Overshield and Rockets. We are very, it's very unlikely to see either of these two teams peak before those two power weapons and power-ups are up on the map. Oh my god, Boo Boo Doo Boo spots the elbow of Stellar. He might have a cheek. Oh, take the shot. Why not? Oh, Stellar goes down to one shield. That's going to cause a little bit of chaoticness in the comms here for SSG at the right time when Rockets and OS are up.
And Stellar is the opposing sniper, and he has to leave that sniper top sword position. I think that overshield is one here by Space Station. Gamers first should be able to rotate out with the rockets. Stellar oh. and Boo Boo with the snipers. Ego with the overshield. The only piece I'm looking for is the rockets. And both teams, even with power control, are slowing down. But Space Station, that overshield is going to diminish over time where the rockets will retain their effectiveness. A very interesting strategy here. At this point, SSG and Elamite, this is a play call from Elamite. He's telling wow. Eco to not move forward because you have to almost wonder as a player the desire to push forward with that overshield. <laughs> Instead, the play call is out from SSG. They're going to wait for Boo Boo to cross through here, and he's not going to check his corner, and they are likely to take him down for this 50th kill. But he gets away with the repulsor, but not for long. Oh, my God. The strategy, <laughs> the decision-making from Elamite and SSG to park the bus with overshield, no less. You rarely see that decision-making. Never will you see that decision-making likely with an overshield. But the strategy, the cheeky strategy, Pays off for SSG as they now have G1 on the brink of elimination. Oh, here's the replay where Boo Boo Doo was looking for the headshot and he could only catch the elbow. Had that headshot fully come through, we might have seen a different uh, string of events to close out this game. But I tell you what, the last two minutes of gameplay were the drama of the HCS top right here, 12. Right here. Here's one the eco patient play. This right here, that's one of the greatest oh coaching, coaching and or communication decisions amongst these four players that you'll see this year in the HCS. Again, yeah. you're, you're up one. And you see, so you might get baited there to be like, oh, let's just push through yeah. and get those last two kills. My God, the patience, the persistence, the strategy here for SSG is why they're up big 2-0 in this series. And just like we said, it worked out exactly how El Elamite drew it up. Boo Boo Doo, we're going to push forward here, not check his corners because of it. He didn't expect, he, there's no way you ever expect Eco to be sitting there with a full OS, right? That's why he never yes, looked left. Yes. Nonetheless gets away but not for long as wow. ssg takes a nail biter one of the great probably the best match we've seen so far today but it's ssg taking it by two as they go up two in the series i'm gonna put on my uh, detector hat grab my magnifying glass for just a minute because the question i had at the end of that game is where are rockets and it was the specter who had the rocket you see it come across the kill feed right there where all the action was focused on eco versus boo boo doo boo but that was the rocket play ended up as a trade. So in this case, the question of which do you go for overshield versus rockets? It was almost like there was a line drawn vertically across the map, putting G1 on the rocket side, SSG on the overshield side. And in this case, overshield was the one to win out. There were so many high octane moments and I'm really starting to love Slayer Empyrean because of the diversity of the sandbox. Yeah, the more close games we have on Empyrean, the better because it can get really... It, Empyrean to me is feast or famine. It's either a great game or, let's be honest, an awful game. As we saw a true, great true. one there. Great shots there from Sab as G1. This oh, play. my God, the oh. repulsor. Look at it. Look at it like a homing missile there. You have to... Uh, let's, re let's break this down for everyone at home. If you repulse something like a, a grenade, whether it be a frag or a sticky or even a repulsor, it has a little bit of added aim assist, which sends that back towards the opponent. That's where that return to sender medal comes in. We saw Boo Boo Doo Boo. He had the timing there, but not on the push bottom mid, but that is, that's a highlight play nonetheless from Boo Boo Doo Boo. Speaking of highlight plays, it was about the mid game when we saw G1 with the lead. And uh, you were saying from the eye check, that SSG looks like, hey, there's, they look like they're getting run over, right? Yeah. The, the kill feed was all G1, but it was Penguin in the first half of that game that kept SSG within arm's reach of the game. And then in the end, it's Penguin who comes out with the 19 and 12, the plus seven in a game of Slayer, just one off of the 20 bomb. Huge plays from Penguin and the rest of SSG to clutch up that game. All right, here we go. Hopping back on board here with Boo Boo Doo Boo. Overshield up in 10 seconds. G1 electing to take that first kill time. Usually, this causes a reversal where the other team gets the overshield instead. And it looks like G1 is not even going to play for this overshield. It's almost an uncontested. I think I saw one player there for G1, but that's Boo Boo Doo Boo. He's going to rotate back towards this hillside. So G1, they get that first half of time, but it looks like Space Station should get the overshield instead. You, you almost always see that decision here on live fire king of the hill pick one or the other do you want the hill do you want the opening time or do you want the overshield and rarely do you see a team that comes out with both 
We would do now rotating through nest. Players Where down on over? both sides. SSG is eliminated. I, I saw it at Nest Box, but I didn't see who had it. Major, major credit to G1 there answering and really, again, sticking with that strategy. We saw a great strategy there previously from SSG. There's a little great strategy there from Hoaxer and the rest of Gamers first. <gasps> Taking that first kill, kill and setting up for a response on the overshield is we didn't even see it. So clearly it yeah, didn't provide yeah. any issues for gamers first as they're on the brink of taking a 1-0 lead. The cast game will blow your mind. Do you know how great of an observer Knighty is? Do you know how great of an observer Knighty is? Like the best you ever? You the question, where's overshield? And he immediately switches to Falcated, who has the plasma pistol. So if I'm going to keep that magnifying glass on, I'm going to assume that Falcated with a plasma pistol deleted the overshield. But whichever way the cookie crumbles, gamers oh. first, secure that first objective. And I love that too, with that seaside spawn for gamers first, you spawn right next to that plasma pistol. Oh, that might be why we saw them elect to go straight for the hill and not even really send anyone over for overshield as now they do suspector with that shroud screen grabs the first overshield for gamers first and with a lead of 1-0 g1 are looking primed for a potential reverse sweep of their own watch out though falcated went down falcated was juggling plasma pistol and heat wave the two weapons that are the perfect counters for this overshield suspector does find a kill before running into either of those counter weapons and then the perfectly placed frags sets up a clean kill onto penguin right now suspector is not playing for hill time he's playing survival and it's working space station go three down gamers first the cavalry the res resources the recruits have arrived yeah, and look at the restraint there on the in this case again the, the dichotomy the juxtaposition the restraint now from gamers first is they waited till they had all three or excuse me a team wipe advantage three four down from ssg then they got in the hill took it calmly coolly and collectively and the key there is that you know ssg is going to be spawning on that a side of the map as we see a good hold here on this second hill g1 approaching the 50 second mark but the push is on here from ssg sniper in the hands of stellar but no he gets dropped sniper goes down falcated goes down as g1 loses control of that sniper tower bound stealing it and potentially this hill as well maybe the hill but they haven't gotten any time on the hill and bound is taken down as well so even though they saw the round of slays going to space station bound in that premier real estate position at the top of tower it doesn't account to anything objective wise zab has a player on the run it's penguin trying to get through b pillars as he rounds the corner zab doubles up back and looks for the push it's going to come from three sides top mid cuts nest and dummy ramp here's the collapse from space station Bound previously going down at Snipe Tower, but look at that in the blink of an eye. He's right back at plus one with that sniper in hand as well. Four shots to work with and a potential four down with perfect accuracy. Bound baiting this overshield. G1 setting up for it on the sandbag side. This angle, he's going to have to hit a jump shot. Wow, Bound. He's, you know you're cracked when you're giving yourself a more difficult shot to make sure that you're not exposing as much of yourself. That's what we just saw there from Bound as the accuracy looks good to take down one. Is it enough to take that overshield as well? Yes. Okay, and this is where SSG hop on the objective finally, right? They were very patient because they wanted the sniper, they wanted tower control, they wanted overshield. They were really, you know, setting the table for a hold here on hill number two. And they're finally getting their feet on that objective. Bound is continuing to look for jump snipes, just bunny hopping around the map. Eco rotating through, elbow has the backup. All the fight on the opposite side of the map as Space Station can take the lead on hill two time. Yeah, and at this point, if Bound is playing Bumper Jumper, he's got to make sure he has a Battle Beaver backup because he might break the jump button. He's been pressing it so much. He's still jumping in the back of the map like a like a bunny rabbit. Takes another jump shot, misses, and eventually goes down. But the strategy, the, uh, the interesting strategy there from Bound works out to get SSG back in the lead on this second hill. And oh my God, we're looking at a 2-0 game for Gamers first or a 1-1 tie with less than two to go. This is really important to, uh, important to point out, Magic, because usually you might see about a minute per hill time. Here we're seeing a lot more game clock dwindle down without seeing the scoring in the stat sheet. Oh, I wanted to see Bound with that Repulsor, maybe getting a little bit of an extra high jump, but no, he's taken down Boo Boo Dubu now has the Repulsor in hand and Gamers first, they were able to break that hole. It was so well thought out. It was so well set up by Space Station, but they came just short of objective time. And I have to think it has to go back to the early stages of the hill where 
the space station had the slays, but they didn't give up any bodies to get that early time onto the hill. So now they're down zero to two. Gamers first are looking ready to fight their way back into the series. The Spectre with the heat wave, he sh shoots out two rounds. He connects on the damage, but Stellar stays alive. Huge, huge clutch up there from Gamers first as it did look like SSG was ready to tie it. But now, Gamers first with the 2-0 lead in King of the Hill. There's just 90 seconds left on the game clock here. So, SSG is going to have to really push down the pace. The sniper is going to be something Double to open kill. up the floor, open up oh the pace, extend gosh. the pace, and extend this lead on this third hill for SSG. They look primed to score this one again. Yeah, and they need it, right? Because 0 to 3 is nearly a GG's at this point. Yep. 1 to 2 means, hey, we're in this fight, and hopefully gamers first are going to be 1 to 2 at the end of this match. Stellar's finally taken down. Valkade gets the double kill with the use of those plasma grenades just as objective number 4 spawns in. Spectre at the back of the base. He wins another kill. The Piv onto Bound is going to keep gamers first in map control. All right, still that 90 seconds left and a 1 kill or excuse me he'll score there for ssg so playing extremely i guess you have objective efficiency here you have some clock efficiency is that one hasn't dwindled down at all but now it's all g1 scoring on this yeah. fourth hill reaching the halfway mark if ssg lose this hill it's over and you know that if SSG had lost the third hill, Gamers First no doubt would be playing Slays. to time, but they can't yep. afford to at this stage of the game. So you see them getting that first almost half of the objective time won over. Stellar chases down Sab, gets the kill. Space Station have the hill locked down. Boo Boo Doo Boo shooting out across window side, but right now it's all SSG on the objective. Overshield is just 15 seconds away. So to the victor go the spoils. The objective plus overshield are gonna be in unison. Oh, two for one scenario here in a 2-1 game. This could not be a more pivotal sequence as Sav goes down 3-3 tied as both players throw themselves into that mod pit yes. of a shroud screen. Overshield goes the victor. Boo Boo Doo looks to sneak away with it. But no, he goes down. Eco from the positioning of cuts takes him down. Can he cut into that overshield? No, the Spectre gets it. Another shroud screen, a really well-timed shroud screen is going to milk more time here for G1. Yeah, and it's gonna make it hard for Spectre to get any utility out of that overshield. He had already burned a lot of the overshield and then the shroud screen not giving him any lanes of sight. But look at the time on the clock. He just needs to hold on for two seconds. Stellar on the push, gets taken out of the perfect kill. Three to one in this game with a minute 30 on the clock. And this is where you see gamers first shift into that slayer mentality. All right, and Leah, let's remember overall in the open series, it's gamers first with the three to edge over ssg gamers first with the 3-0 sweep last week ssg looking to return the favor this week but it's looking more and more unlikely as eco pushes in a little desperation there almost like you'd see in a ctf and it makes sense here down two on king of the hill ssg needs something and they need it quick penguin barely misses on that charge plaza pistol round and the response is quick the response is decisive the response is the double kill from sab notice how no one from gamers first is Stepping, stepping foot onto that hill. A minute to go on the clock. A few more rounds of slays. It's going to decide this game. Falcated sets up a kill. Boo Boo Doo Boo hits his snipe. Penguin and Bound both forced to wait for the respawn. Stellar spawns a back of B. And snipe. he's going to find the Killing snipe of Boo Boo Doo Boo ready for that rotation. Oh, Boo Boo Doo Boo starting to heat up. And that's not something you want to see if you're SSG. Oh, Boo Boo no. Doo Boo 18 and 8. And a, oh, a white flag from Eco Smith. Mm -hmm. Despite being up 2 0 in the series, a little bit of that mental battle, a little bit of that mental fortitude being shown here from G1. And that's, I mean, that's the first we saw of it. And what, what we're calling the white flag is Eco got bodied by the snipe and he just stood still. He dropped the roller. his death and was done. Was done with this game. Take it to game number four as G1 are showing us some fight in this series where I honestly would feel a little underwhelmed if this was another 3-0. We want the game four. Even better, a game five is at the top of my Christmas wish list. Oh, a game five on recharge. That would be spicy, but oh my God stronghold streets this game is going to be fast chaotic you're going to have cycle cycle after cycle after cycle here on streets and a lot like in game two where you had a lot of sandbox to utilize streets is just like that ssg though taking the narrow win on empyrean as we head to streets let's take a look back at some of the replays Mikowski, you're faded. Cycle plays for complexity. We just saw him in the series previously, yeah. okay? So no, no cycling happening on streets for this semifinals matchup. 
but it is going to be off of these replays looking at g1 it started with that first hill capture but honestly i mean i, I think hill number two was the turning point of this game because we saw early time one over and then it was flipped in the end uh by ssg so honestly if i was gonna re-watch this game i would look for how g1 controlled hill number two and where ssg could have picked up more objective time because i think that was the deciding factor of the game yeah and i love the mental regain here from uh, g1 led by the coach hoaxer going down in that game too to go down 0-2 in the series in a way where it was kind of tough you know you had the lead a five kill lead for the majority of that match it wasn't until ssg grabbed control of the snipe tower on streets that they had that incredible end game finish now they're going to need to figure it out beginning middle and end game here as we saw a little bit of a shaky start there from ssg and that's what opened it up for yeah. gamers first they had that 1-0 lead and again like i said earlier just like in hockey you, you force the team the other team to chase when you, you get that first hill in king of the hill and that's exactly what we saw from ssg chasing not able to capture it though well, stronghold is ssg's best game type with an 83 percent win rate so not only are g1 up against uh being down in the series one to two but they need to take ssg down on their best game type it's a tall task is g1 up for the challenge it's merely a mission impossible task being dealt to their hands located with one rocket finds a kill fires the second one that was like okay maybe i get a kill but at least i don't give up this rocket because you can feel this pressure from eco closing in on the triple kill a uh, huge opening break win here for ssg that should open up the scoring for them unless gamers first can push out a c towards that red side of the map and potentially stop the scoring as it ticks six seven eight ssg with a good start here great start for space station gamers first are rotating behind trying to get onto a but it's eco who shuts down that push but he has to re-engage before his health wow. is back and even at no shield eco wins that fight and he had to approach at that exact time in order to get on the hill to stop the points just at two and oh no Mikowski is a triple cap for space station yeah eco must have put down the controller last match to stretch his hands maybe go get a, a, a snack or some hydration as he looks quite refreshed here in game four six oh spree for him as he has not found a death yet and now it looks like he's on the other side of a by himself a chance for gamers first to collapse as they take down penguin eco on the stairs boo doo boo not able to take him down with the sentinel beam and eco with that survivability looks to push up with a teammate but a great play there from falcon and specter as they take down three regain numbers advantage and regain b as well the word frenzy was on the tip of my tongue right there. If Eco had hit the eight kill mark without going down, Streets has been the spot for killing sprees. And Eco as one of the, I, I think a lot of people deem Eco as one of the most underrated players in HCS. He doesn't always get the spotlight. He doesn't always make the flashy plays. But today we're seeing Eco in full form leading out throughout this series. And on the other side, Gamers First might be relying on a player like Boo Boo Doo Boo to make those smart heads up plays and stop this game from running away where we see a 50 point lead now for SSG. Looking for an opening break kill here as they take down Stellar. Easy use of those rockets. A should flip back to gamers first. Stop the bleeding for a little bit at the 15 to 69 mark. As Sab now pushes through mid. Has a little bit of tick there on C. He checks for it, but you have two in the back of C for gamers first. So Sab going to re-elect to send his attention to Penguin instead as he goes down. But Sab goes down as well. Boo Boo Doo Boo now with his roommate and duo Falcated. But they, they split and now regroup and regain back together. Boo Boo Doo with that boom block here. That's going to afford him a couple extra shots on his opponents as gamers first come back in this game and come back in the scoring as well. And Sab gets the opening pick on this approach. Boo Boo Doo Boo fires out a couple of warning shots, but he's watching the top of B rail. That's not where the push is. It's over on planner's side. And it's Sab and Falcated holding off the line as all four from Space Station are putting pressure onto A. Now Boo Boo Doo Boo is falling back. He finds one kill. He's gonna, if he runs the corner, he's gonna find himself in a 1v2 situation. He gets some damage onto Penguin. And now it's looking like it might trade zones A, B, and C now. All three are about to be flipped. Uh, G1 doing a great job here, uh, though, despite losing that scoring once again to shut down Eco after he started off 7-0. Three straight deaths for him. 
Part of the reason why we saw gamers first bounce back, but the scoring once again favoring SSG. Much higher scoreline than the 50 point spread we saw earlier on. And it looks like C might be the next item on the menu for gamers first to try to secure. But Ego is broken through on the B side. He could try to flip B, maybe do a little bit of trade. It looks like that's what's going to happen as he rains down fire across the map. Three go down for gamers uh -oh. first. And we're looking at a potential triple cap if that reset comes through onto C. It's not going to be the reset. Instead, it's gamers first getting quickly Killing onto that A zone. But all that did was gave him with the information. Kill to fire those rockets yeah penguin seeing the score go up for gamers first on a sends one down through the intel he gained through the ui great heads up play there with the rockets as penguin will eventually go down hopping back on board here with eco who had a great start to this match and is getting back into form here with two straight kills pushing it now to b has a pivotal fight here with suspector because suspector if he takes him down will earn b and he does just that Spectre earns a kill and now he's playing for his life. The push is coming back to B. A couple of rounds of fire out onto Penguin, but the Spectre couldn't fully engage in that fight because he was still low on shield. So now he drops down to mid. The combined fire onto Ego gets one. Two players from SSG and Trash, but the first frag, an unfortunate bounce off of the geometry is going to send it right back. And so goes Spectre backing off of that fight. Spectre with some incredible survivability here on the tire side. Watch the side of Eco Smith, but oh, that's a huge trade there for Eco because the Spectre had the first two shots and with two caps here for SSG, that could prove pivotal, but oh, don't look now. G1 is fighting no, for no, control no. of B, but the shotgun goes down. Stellar takes it instead and takes back the lead as well. You talked about how Repulsor beats Rockets. Well, in that 1v1 scenario, it was the Sentinel Beam taking down the Bulldog. Stellar utilizing the, the longer range of that microwave weapon to get that B secured. And right now we're approaching that red zone. That 200 point mark is close here for Space Station. They have doubled up on the score over gamers first, but the round of slays go to G1. Spectre's holding down the objective. Could get points back for G1 here and now the push coming through planner's side as rockets are being snuck away bound gets the opening damage those rockets are gonna flip hands yeah bound at 4 and 11 but just as we saw there with the assist that matters because it's a takedown nonetheless these guys they don't i mean there, there's a little bit of pride you have in your stats but more than anything these guys no, want no. to win so there we see bound a player known for his individual skill really putting the team first here with this stat sheet that's something you'll love to see the stat doesn't tell the whole story and it's all about the team plays not where you stack up amongst your own rosters about where you stack up one roster to the opposing team's roster and right now it's space station with that lead they don't get the b capture though stopped at about 90 percent i think stellar's the player to hop on and get that secured but sab is playing on the a side we might see gamers first now ac is where they regained a chunk of time early in the match and they have that ac hold again yeah, with that AC hold, you almost kind of like take your fingers and pinch them. Not in the uwu version, if you've ever seen that meme, but almost in like a, a deadly grip, right? Where A and C can force those B spawns. But SSG does a great job to grab C right back. That's huge. Just as it looked like G1 had the form, had the position, he had the caps to come back in this one. It's SSG starting to run away with it a little bit. Almost at that 200 mark. And what a time to stop the scoring here for G1 as they look to regain C. But the push is on from the red side. Voodoo has the stalker rifle. He sees Bound on the rotation. I don't know if he connected on those shots. It was enough for the assist to come through. The reset on the A side, sorry, the C side hold. They're holding on to that A and C for that grasp, for that pincher play, but they're losing the slays on the side of A. Sab is slowing down right now because rockets are just five seconds away. Bound is at the top of B stairs. It might be a Sab versus Bound fight over on the B side as Sab indeed is playing for those rockets. There's multiple targets around the corner to his right. He's going to find Killing one takedown on three. Stellar. Looking for the double. The clan double is going to give him the triple, triple kill, kill as he gets damage onto multiple targets. And gamers first might have a much needed triple cap to get back into this game.
Oh, and just as it looked like Sab was about to trade out with a rocket explosion at his feet, he dips back a little bit, oh, takes no. the triple, but eventually goes down at B. A lot of times we've seen gamers first gain a little bit of an edge or a little bit of lead. SSG has answered it back masterfully with the A and B cap simultaneously. The amount of teamwork and coordination that takes is incredible. And Stellar is leading the way. 19 slays for Stellar as he's locking down the defensive side on B. We're in that red zone past the 200 mark. If Slayer starts at 30, Stronghold starts at 200. And Stellar wants to make sure that they finish the series the way they started, just 25 seconds away from the three to one lead as Bound picks up another. And Gamers First are playing with a level of desperation that could spell trouble. Bound with a little peek and pop there, but he's double gonna visit the kill. respawn screen once again in a well-timed double kill off the rack with that shotgun from Boo Boo Doo Boo. And he has one more at one HP. Penguin, he can get it too. Stellar doesn't get it from uh, Boo Boo Doo Boo, but he gets it from his teammate. And now Gamers First gets back that AC hold they've been trying to establish all game. And, but then the it flips to go down. SSG again. This, uh, so unfortunate for every single time this match gamers first has had a strong hold on these strongholds it's almost like three not even five seconds later ssg has the pressure again and they had to decide here between trying to flip b or contesting for a and it looks like they contested for okay. a they actually held on they didn't give it up completely but boo boo dubo has to clear the other side of the map looking for the takedown slays are still going uh trade for trade gamers first are leading boo boo dubo has penguin weakened the rockets are on the ground penguin stayed alive in that 1v1 fight but the clock is ticking for gamers first penguin re-engages at the perfect time to get the slay oh penguin with a huge huge kill there at one hp that should flip the scoring back into ssg's favor and if not for a stronghold capture here on b this one could be over for gamers first three going down last player alive he goes down boo boo doo boo down and it's likely g1 down here in this series as it's going to take a miracle a last second stop if they want to survive Oh, he's got a little, uh, a little ghost buddy. Almost looked like a destiny uh, <laughs> the what the ghost, hell? like the little purple planet helping out right there. But no turret forming from that purple orb. Just a little bit of a UI glitch happening, but no glitch in the series. SSG three to one. They come back after going down to G1 last week, zero three, and nearly flipped the table back over the opposite way. Three to one is the end as G1 are gonna drop into the lower bracket. There's still that potential for a rematch match further on in today's bracket but space station gaming are the team to secure the spot in that winner's finals oh i feel like we got a rivalry developing here magic yes. ssg versus g1 in the open series g1 with the narrow 4-3 lead in a best of seven as it's more of a what you've done for me recently kind of thing right where ssg yeah. take today's series but for gamers first they're gonna have a chance to bounce back through the lower side but i want to go back to the uh of a rivalry you've got hoaxer the former coach for this cloud previous cloud nine roster he's now coaching g1 and then you got oath versus uber nick as well and if these teams face each other as much as they have here in these open series in these first two weeks i absolutely think we have a rivalry forming and lastly they're the two and three seats so they're separated only by one in the standings yeah, i'm gonna call it right here this is a this is a rivalry forming right before our eyes I love, I love that, and I absolutely agree. The 3 last week, and now a 3-1. These two teams are going to be battling neck and neck throughout this whole season until either one can secure that position as the dominant top seed in that, whether it's number three spot, I would assume at this point, it's almost like we have the rivalry optic phase and now a secondary rivalry chomping right at their heels between SSG and Gamers First. So Space Station going into the winner's finals. I think we're gonna be able to get a little bit of a sight on the opposite semifinal matchup, which is Phase versus Native White. Ooh, all right, here we go. FaZe versus Native White. Looks like FaZe has the lead here in game two, needing it to tie this series up at one. Native White with a win here could put S uh, F FaZe plans back against the wall, excuse me. And Snakebite here, knowing that he's going to go down, waste some of that sniper ammo, and with three shots down, uh, up six, that's pivotal there. That can be a, a lead cut in half if you're Native White. And Magic, let's not, let's not, let's not kid ourselves. We've seen these guys come back in a situation <laughs> like this, which sounds faded, but they've done it before. On land! 
they had done it before on land and now they're only eight kills down i say only but in the home stretch of this game phase only need three kills native white have proven time and time again that in the closing moments of a slayer and it is closing moments because time is also working against them they only have 30 seconds to get two full rounds of slays so renegade has to push the issue he's taken down 48 to 40 and three players from phase are all grouped up in the party room where the heat wave spawns frosty is laying down cover fire it's gonna be enough for phase to tie up the series ah oh, so considerate for phase clan to invite us to their party there on the sword <laughs> side those phase clan parties those yeah, are so exclusive magic parties. you know how lucky we are to be partying with the cool kids at phase clan yeah. nonetheless they tie up the series one one and they're not looking to celebrate just yet. They have a lot left in this series if they want to avoid an upset from, let's call it the Cinderella, the upset story from Charlotte, Native White. Definitely Native White is that Cinderella story that everybody loves to cheer for. Not only did they mount upset after upset at Charlotte, but this international roster, I mean, barcode, Gilkey, McWin, Tappy Buttons, like there's not one player on this roster that you have a hard time rooting for. It's definitely a team that you'd love yeah. to see competing. And the fact that they took game number one is a great way for them to open up the series in a potential upset that is now tied. And I need to, I need to go back a minute, McCassie, because when I'm Cassie, I call it the party room. If you were Cassie, you would have called it the mosh pit. Does that just show a little bit about the different perspectives we're bringing to this cast? Well, you know what's so funny, Magic, is right before you called it the party room, I thought in my own head, I'm like this looks like a party in here look at all the red lights and all the flares so it just goes to show we are so on the same page that's why we're the duo magic kowski because the same teamwork you see from these players and teams we gotta have a two on the caster side right you gotta have a little co chemistry cohesion and communication with your castmate as well right yeah absolutely right i think it makes for a, a better show and certainly it makes for a lot more fun on, on this side to be able to cast alongside someone with uh, like the just the game knowledge but also like the sense of humor that mikowski brings to the table uh absolutely having a blast here this top 12 we'll be continuing on with this match of phase versus native white and which of these two teams is going to ultimately match up against SSG in that winner's finals? And Mikowski, I haven't put you on the spot yet, but who are you picking for this series? I'm going to go with FaZe Clan here, but I got to just preface. I haven't really gotten a chance to see much of this series. I usually like to go with my gut and what I see uh, as it relates to the eye test okay, here. So okay. I think for us, not only is this one going to separate this series, but it's going to separate these two teams, one of these two teams, taking a pivotal 2-1 lead. And you have to think with the likes of Faceland and even the Native White, they're not likely to relent a lead, a match point lead, no less. So this game three, feeling like it's even a little bit deeper in the series. There's definitely a, um, a weight that this game three is holding right now with FaZe Clan as that number one seed, feeling like they need to defend their title a little bit against this, this upstart team of native white that have time and time again proved that you cannot count them out. Barcode is going to stay alive at the back of B, and this is one of those situations where we see native white. I think they came out with overshield and the objective where usually you see one or the other. Oh, and three going down. Frosty, last player alive. You have Royal 2 on the respawn at Back River. And that's a split spawn away from Frosty. So this opens up a potential for Phase Clan to pinch with good communication and positioning. As we see a little bit of that, Royal 2 pushing up with that sniper. Has a 2v1 on McWin, but McWin does a great job taking down Renegade with the grenade. And Royal 2 goes down as well. Tapping buttons with Overshield and Snipe. And this monster lead. Native White looking really strong here to start game three. Hold on to your buttons, as Mikowski once said, because tapping buttons has remaining seconds of the overshield, the heat wave, the sniper, for sure the player to watch. Deadly force could come out of tapping buttons at any time. And right now, patiently rotating through, making sure that first objective is secured. He gets the body shot. One round left in the sniper, four rounds in the heat wave, only five rounds of high deadly damage left for tapping buttons to utilize misses on that snipe shot so he has to swap over to the heat wave as he's trying to soften up players he doesn't have a lot of backup here on this push he's gonna have to push nearly solo on this play the rest of native white approaching from top pit yeah and after that 1-0 start for native white it was just one kill in that opening sequence that native white had on phase plan that's the objective efficiency we're talking about when you have one extra kill and one extra score on the obj to speak of that is exactly what we're looking at when we speak on the objective efficiency needed from these top teams in these crucial 
winner's semi-final matchups. Winner's semi-finals. And like this game, it carries a certain weight to it because one of the top, you know, four teams being dropped into the lower bracket seemingly too soon. And Native White yeah. as that four seed, what an upset it would be if they can hang on and force FaZe Clan to an early drop to that lower bracket. But FaZe, they're looking ready to fight. They collapse on the top of the tower, but it's tapping buttons again, rotating behind, catches a snake bite, and hopefully sets up a play as well as Gilkey gets some damage on some Renegade, but he barely misses on that tower jump. Can't clamber up to the ledge. So FaZe Clan, they have the numbers for a brief moment of time. Yeah, roll two looking like he got rocketed there. He got sent to the heavens and the respawn screen. I believe it's just a lowly frag grenade utilizing that with efficiency as well as Native White as they have the lead here 1 0. Face them with the lead on this next kill. But just as I say that, they go three down, two down for Native White, tapping buttons, looking to secure this hill. Royal two, the last player alive momentarily, and he's at bottom mid here. So we're going to see that score continue to stack up here for Native White. Full sniper in the hands of Royal 2, and there's gonna be two teammates rotating at the back of B, but Royal 2's gonna look for a pick here on the tower side as all of FaZe regroups, and this is the part where they kind of organize and orchestrate their strategy. Royal 2 nearly find the head of Tapping Buttons, but instead Tapping Buttons is the one who finds the kill. Royal 2 now perfect. engaging, gets the perfect, not spending any sniper ammo, instead relying on the perfect VR to get the job done. FaZe Clan once again have found some numbers Numbers, but do they turn this into objective control? And at this point, World 2 extending that life past one minute. Is it a caster's curse? Will it go down? No, he's going to stay alive for even longer. Royal 2 with that sniper in hand a minute ago at the same exact location. It's like deja vu pushing up through the cut side with a chance to bring his team back, not only in this game, but on this hill as well. Yeah, but his teammates all went down. So even while he's staying alive, while he's getting kills, he's losing that kill. He's losing his teammates. And that sniper had no impact on the overall objective score of this game. 2-0 to is native white Empty looking kills. ready to fight. Empty kills. Exactly. They had no impact. Yeah, empty kills there for Royal 2. And the, time, the right time and right place has been all right for native white. Two down for each squad here. Slight numbers advantage by just a second here for Native White. And honestly, that's the difference. That's, it's going to be a second. That really is the difference between these two teams. It's been a hard-fought match despite the 2-0 lead here for Native White. Phase plan coming back with a vengeance. Renegade has multiple players. We, he gets the kill. He gets the assist. Can he turn into a double? It's Renegade versus Barcode in this pivotal fight to control the hill. Renegade is milking his life, using that pillar for all the cover. And it was enough time for Frosty to engage in the fight. Frosty gets there in time. Renegade stalled just long enough. And we're looking at it's going to be a 2-1 game as the final seconds on that objective come through. Renegade and the rest of FaZe are right back in this fight. Yeah, and most importantly there for FaZe Clan, down 2-0 with less than three to go. They hardly used any game clock to secure that first score for them. So FaZe Clan right back in it with two and a half to go. Down one, you've got Renegade with one shot in that sniper, which doesn't seem like much, but if it is secures the headshot on the opening break, it's going to be worse. But no, Barca Barcode with the damage. Was a little defensive play there. Pushes Renegade off the spot and back to the respawn screen. But FaZe Clan with the numbers advantage for now. But know that he wave going to make it a 2-2. But that little distraction there at the screen door opens up the overshield for Royal 2. Right, we saw Royal 2 with the sniper that had those empty slays. But what can Royal 2 do with the overshield? Because now he's playing full objective mode. He's dealing out damage left and right. But Native White with the combined team fire, they just kind of milk uh, they kind of trickle down right they kind of nickel and dime down that overshield yeah. with yeah. the combined team Perfect. fire he'll be holding on to key door gets another clean kill there's gonna be a double team maybe a triple team approaching watch this flank here from frosty at key door but guilty had the information had the cob Let's to shift shot. his scope over at the right time for the kill and i believe just after a quick spot check i'm pretty sure native white continues to hold that one kill that plus one disparity and slays between phase plan but again it's showing in the score sheet most importantly 2-1 lead here for native white clinging to that one hill lead and with the way they're playing right now it's a close game but it feels like they're playing it safe it feels like this is all part of the plan for 
negative white as Mickwin will ultimately go down. And Snakebite takes down Tapping Buttons. An opportunity here for them to tie this hill. And again, this game. Ooh, Renegade got the fastball. He gets the kill with the impact of the grenade doing the final damage. Maybe it's not the flashiest metal, but I mean, it certainly is a lot of fun if you can, you know, basically give someone a concussion with a frag grenade connection. And now Renegade has the tower position. No BR in sight. Instead, it's the sniper assault rifle combo. He also has one repulse left. So if the push comes through the back of the tower, he's ready to send someone for a swim. But he is the last alive for the team. Team. He's left scrambling, forced out of that tower control, and the timing couldn't be worse because Native White are about five seconds away from capturing their third hill, and they get it. Native White, once again, objectively superior. Up two. Less than two to go, and it's the Mosh Pit Hill top mid. This one's going to milk out a lot of clock, regardless of which direction this one's go, as we do, in fact, see that game clock continue to dwindle away and Gilkey there looks like only stepping in the hill to position himself for a slay on a gonna be interested to see whether native white plays for slays entirely here or a, or the hill a little bit of mix let's see what Barco yeah. does well, I mean, this is a, this is very deja vu to what we saw from G1, right? Weren't they up 3-1 on this exact map and mode on the other side of the semifinals? And they very specifically played to time here, which ended up paying off for them to get that victory. So Native White, it looks like they might be playing some more of the same. Definitely not stepping foot on that objective. Playing for Slays with just a minute 16 left. Mickwin goes for a swim. That heat wave is going to get set back to the rack. Snakebite, Royal 2. Have a good lock here on this hill. And with Sniper up now, one of these two players could grab that and further the scoring, but doing a great job here. That Sniper is bait for now. The action, the focus is on these players pushing top mid. Yeah, barcode on the flank. So a great job here from FaZe Clan. Such a, it's like, it's like a hot, juicy steak just sitting on the table, but they don't take it. They make sure the sides get put down as first, you know, little asparagus and mashed potatoes, and now they're ready to eat. They are ready. They set the table, but FaZe still need about 10 seconds on this hill. Royal 2 is going to hop on, and luckily he had full shield, but he sees the frag grenade. He's milking his life. Still over a minute of time left for FaZe, but no, the snipe Huge. from Gilkey shuts him down on the rotation. This round of slays so crucial for Native White to get some more time on the board. Yeah, and now FaZe Clan, they're in a situation where they have to desperate for the final just few seconds on this hill. It looked like they had it locked down, but oh, the snipe and the grenade toss from Native White has them up considerably, feeling comfortable in this game. Still up by a margin of two. And FaZe Clan, they only need two seconds, but they're not gonna get it. Oh no, they might need two seconds. They do get the time, okay? But how much time was spent from the start of that hill to then? Weren't they at just below the two minute mark when that, that hill started? Little so over I think a minute. more than half of their time has been spent. Luckily yep. for them, this hill at the back of me is easier to, to defend than what you call that mosh pit top center hill. And FaZe Clan are not wasting time. They had a foot on the objective, but Gilkey tapping buttons, Barco each getting a kill are gonna make it so tough for FaZe Clan off of these respawns oh huge back-to-back -back sequences where native white it's not like they get a full team wipe they just take down two for phase clan to slow down the scoring on that second hill delayed them getting two on the board and then just now another two kills is all they need Smart. to secure game three take a lead in this series two one and then it all look now but the number one seed no, 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 phase no. clan has a chance two seconds left i thought <laughs> they're gonna be on the break but no Tapping buttons gets a couple slays and they will in fact take that game. But you're right, Magic. How many times have we seen 0, 0, 0, 249 yeah. in a stronghold? Yeah. You gotta play all the way till you see the stat screen or the or the LVT B roll as we see that here as Native White does in fact secure game three, goes up 2-1 in the series, and now Face Clan in a spot, in a situation where, let's not forget if I'm correct here, they've only been in this spot once to G1. G1, the only team to yeah. beat FaZe Clan in these online open series. I know we had Optic win the major land, but online, it's only been Gamers First who's been able to take down FaZe Clan. Is Native White the next team added to that list? You know, when we were looking at SSG versus G1, I said, you know, we got the top two teams, FaZe and Optic, and then there's three teams in the mix I mentioned kind of vying for that third place spot. And I have to correct myself because I did not mention Native White as one of those teams. This 
this midsection, like the, the, the top level of HCS competitive is so tight right now. It's yeah. so mixy that any team can take down any team. And I want to say even like the top six teams there. So it's very back and forth. You can never discount a team. And honestly, this is what I am loving about HCS season two so far is that you never know what to expect. This is the Tony gift where you throw the script out the window. There's no script to follow anymore. Yeah, and real quick, want to thank Lord Jezit with the Prime sub. I think we saw Onset there early with a resub as well. Before we get into this next game four, I just want to take a quick moment to thank everybody for tuning in and watching. The LVT is community supported, community funded, and let's be frank, LVT is for the community. So to see the love back, to see the support through Prime subs, gifted subs, whatever it might be, all of that goes directly back into the people that you see on stream and let's not forget forget only not only on stream but behind the scenes as well the admins the producers the observers like nighty night all of the support that you guys show goes directly towards us in the community so thank you so much for that support and also want to shout out mr snow stats taylor he's giving us some of the stats some of the analytics to tell us okay this is this team's best game type or here's which player to watch out for really trying to make us look good and just give valuable information across the broadcast and of course mr brandon lvt himself locking down on the production side it is a full team effort and you chat are included in that thank you so much for all the support as we continue to deliver the highest quality halo competition that we are capable of and this matchup is a perfect example of that as Native White now lead the series two to one. Are you gonna stick with your prediction, Mikowski? I'll give you one chance to back out because you said Face Clan was coming away. Do you think they get the next two? Now I needed a little, I needed one game to watch. I needed one <laughs> eye test to know that Native White is gonna win this series. Okay. I know that sounds pretty convincing, but yeah. they're taking it to Face Clan, a, a team that, like I said, hasn't looked has looked nothing but dominant online almost like unfairly dominant online outslaying teams by a margin of almost like 20 plus 30 in some of these matches native white though is leading in slays but it's by such a narrow margin it's always like a plus yeah. one or plus two at the end of the game but they're winning these games objectively by one or two as well so native white putting it together when it matters most and you talk about muddying the waters up here, Magic. We talked about Phase and Optic being at the top of that tier one, tier two. You got yes. SSG, G1, Native White, and Native Red. Native White with a win here muddies the waters even more and adds even more parity to the top six. Yeah, because up until, from Charlotte till now, We've seen FaZe, we've seen Optic going head to head. I think you mentioned that G1 took down FaZe in the qualifier leading up to Charlotte, but I think in everybody's minds, we still have those two teams at the top of the list. So that's starting, those lines are getting blurred, that water is getting muddied with teams like Native White on the brink of a potential upset. And it just goes to show that slinging out is not enough. Even though Native White had the slight lead, they've won every objective game in the series. And in a best of five, three out of five of those games are going to be objective based, including this street stronghold, Royal Two, with one rocket to hopefully break through to be. Halo, like a mental digital game of chess. That's why sometimes we see teams lose out in the slaying performance, but win out in the match. We're getting a little taste of that here. Native White just barely edging out fate native, or excuse me, phase in the scoreboard and the kill sheet, but early it's Native White going two down and a potential two score here for FaZe Clan if they could just secure B. Tapping buttons there, looking to put a little defense on it. Oh, but you got a waiting Renegade on the other side of the jukebox with a shotgun instead as FaZe Clan starts the score. Yeah, he's denying you putting a quarter in the jukebox. He wants his music to be playing loud and clear, locking down that B side arcade. B and C now in the hands of FaZe, Native, White. They're two down. They're having a hard time even staying alive off these respawns. Barcode milks his life, and the help from Mikwin comes in just in time. Snake fight now, anchoring the stair side of the map, and that's huge because you could see there that Native White roster wanted to push through and take B, and yet Snake Bite defending it. Now that the Slays are down, three go down for Native White. He's going to push forward, but he goes down there. So a great answer back from Native White. Just didn't look like that snowball was about to start rolling for FaZe Clan. He goes down. Native White with the Slay to potentially open up a push at B. Here's that push at B. It's Barcode just taking down Royal 2. Royal 2 wins that fight, but do you notice that Mikwin lines up the headshot? But I don't even think there was a melee trade. 
not only did Royal 2 win the fight, but he had the majority of his health left after taking down Barcode. And that's why you see Base Clan still holding on to that B side control, still adding points on the board. And right now, it's looking like the objective play is one sided off of Base Clan's lead in the slain department. Uh oh, and it looks like you may have caught a kick the bear with that 2-1 lead for Native White. I don't know, maybe even the prediction I made earlier as FaZe Clan looking to put a 100-0 skunk up on the board. And that kill from Snakebite, that's probably going to secure it. They can almost actually, they're going to rotate for A here. They're going to try to cycle and potentially trip cap in a moment where Native White is down triple digits. And you can see from the slays that phase clan is more Double than doubling commando. up the slays snake by making that nerf commando look like it had a recent buff instead <laughs> yeah. the double kill coming through the assist <laughs> with some of the final rounds i'll be honest since the nerf commando does not feel so good to me anymore but snake Bite might be convincing me otherwise yeah unbelievable sequence there and there it is there's that trip cap we were kind of teeing up there for the for the viewers as FaZe Clan is not only going to take the trip cap, just as it looked like Native White had a little bit of pushback on C, they shut it down. Do they have another answer for Barcode who's looking to sneak away at C? And now you have a double score here, a double, double cap potential here for Native White. But again, FaZe Clan answering back by taking down Gilkey. And if they don't find an answer now, I know we always say like 249 to whatever you can come back on, but certainly yeah. 249 to zero is a done game, right? <laughs> so you would think so, but it's not going to be the zero, oh, luckily, for Native White. They have five. They were pushing all three zones at the same time. C was the first to fall. B and A nearly simultaneously off of tapping buttons, winning some crucial kills. But Gilkey cannot stay alive at the back of C. He drops the Bulldog. He drops to the respawn screen. And FaZe are answering back with a vengeance, only giving up a five points in the process. FaZe Clan's attention focused on C there. That's why Barcode was able to sneak away with these two rockets. In a moment now, Magic, where you almost got to get like a two for one. You got to get at least two kills with these rockets if you're going to have any chance of coming back if you're Native White. And Barcode goes down and doesn't deplete the resource. So now on the flip side, you have Native White pushing up with those rockets instead. But tapping buttons, I believe, took down oh Snake, but you have those rockets. Yeah. So a little answer back here for Native White as they score themselves and need a whole lot of it. Now, I want to go back to tapping buttons because uh, not 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 on screen, but like the storyline there. Because tapping buttons was the player that stayed alive at the back of A in order to get the first five points on the board for Native White. And here again, he's the player getting the kills and staying alive long enough to get the B capture. So tapping buttons is a big breakthrough player when it comes to getting any points on the board. And you, you think that might be crazy? They're still down 155, but if the rest of the team can rally behind that. Native White can still get back in this game. Strongholds be in the game mode that you can uh, you can't get comfortable. It's the least comfortable game mode because it can avalanche so quickly. Now there's the avalanche you're speaking of. Three go down for Native White. If tapping button gets involved here, it's just going to be a, a staggered death. That's why he elects to not push up. He's just waiting for these spawns, waiting for these PD spawns, and a chance to push up with his three teammates and potentially come back in this one. But I gotta I gotta shout out Renegade real quick. Plus 10, 16 and 6. A big reason why Face Clan is up big. They might be up big in this game, but you know that the necessity to win is on FaZe Clan as well. They are the team that maybe surprisingly has their backs against the wall to force a game five. And I'm not saying this game is over because Native White are now putting points back up on the board, but with our sights kind of set towards that game five, it's gonna be anybody's game heading into that match, assuming this one goes through for FaZe Clan. But right now, Native White continue to put points up on the board. Snake Fight gets the breakthrough with the use of that rocket. And I think one more round of slays could secure this game for Face clan it's frosty as another on the board frosty is sitting at 11 and 11 but the assists are about even from team to team it's those slay counts for renegade for snake fight 17 and 6 that are securing this significant lead for face yeah and when snake bite is now outperforming renegade in slaying prowess snake bite one of the glue players of this squad oh my god face clan this is why they're so dangerous because you can have your main slayer not be the main slayer and still have the objective efficiency because of a yeah. guy like snake bite that's what he does he is so great with objective he plays so smart always puts himself in the best position to win as two go down for phase clan but three go down for native white it's been yeah we talked about the slay disparity last time it's a huge margin this time as, as phase clan 
goes up big in this late disparity and wins Double big here kill. in game four 250 to 55 and almost have to wonder like for native white was that like a bait match like did, were they just giving that one to face clan so they could go into this game five and have the same strategy and a, a slayer to to win it in game five i'm not sure exactly what that was nonetheless phase clan with all the slays and all the points take game four i think you bring up an important uh conversation here because we've talked so much about slaying and objective efficiency and i'm wondering i don't know what the stat would look like i'm just like uh, kind of thinking out loud here i'm wondering which game modes translate slays to objective control in the most like direct relationship because it seems like oddball key the hill even when you're down in slays, you can still win objectively, but strongholds seems to be a little bit more like slayer based, which is why Phase Clan was able to run away with that game for off of their slays. Yeah, the slays are what opens up the the cycle, right? For for the uh, whichever team is getting those slays, and when you stagger the deaths and flip spawns and pinch spawns, like we saw there from Phase Clan, there is no hope for the the opposition as we head towards a game five loser going to the lower bracket winner facing off against ssg in the winner bracket someone's got to lose here magic though it all comes down to this it all comes down to this game five slayer on recharge and the first slayer in this series did go to phase not by a wide margin we caught the very final moments of that ended as i believe a 50 to 44 win for phase and they're starting off with some more of the same the double kill comes through for royal two renegade has multiple players trapped in low health as he cleans up the kill off of a perfectly placed frag grenade onto mcmahon uh, dangerous start here for Native White. FaZe Clan, arguably the best slaying team in the league and a Game 5 team slayer that, from a team composition perspective, is honestly brilliant. If you ever do get to those Game 5s, you have to feel like you've got the edge if you're FaZe Clan. Renegade with the edge on Gilkey, edges him out with the elbow to the chin, taking down the OG Gilkey and now maintaining that top control. In 2023, Renegade is ranked first in Slayers with a 1.32 KD. And it looks like he's doing more of the same here. Two Slays already, one assist as well, as all th three players from FaZe have yet to get their first death on the board. They're not only going out strong in the slain department, but they're preserving their lives, as unfortunately I curse her, cur uh, cast her curse two of them. Renegade, don't make it a triple cast her curse. Oh no, that one might go in the record book under the... Uh, bell category for me yeah and, and you were right going into this game aside from the slayers strongholds do in fact have the highest win percentage of the teams that outslay obviously on okay. slayer that's gonna be number right. one but strongholds was in fact number two but will native white be the number two team in this series mm -hmm. down for needing an answer to come back against an extremely strong slaying team in phase plan well, they had that round of slays that they needed to kind of stop the bleeding and they're within reach within that one team wipe down just a three-point game and tapping buttons with a double assist maybe a triple assist he's gonna claim that kill of his own still holding on that three-point difference and the shock rifle in the hands of tapping buttons tapping buttons was slaying out in the last game it wasn't enough to keep native white in the game but if he can do it here again three slays five assists he's responsible for eight out of the 11 slays for the team yeah, really important here that tapping button stays alive because you do not want to flip possession of the shock rifle into FaZe's hands when they already have a five kill lead. This could really snowball, almost like an Imperian Slayer if Frosty is able to get the snipe. But oh no, tapping button with a defensive answer takes down Frosty. Snake bite. Can Renegade get it too? No, he goes down. But I believe the shock rifle did as well as the ammo depletes, and we'll see that up again in 60 seconds. Yeah, it was a great play from Tapping Buttons to try to hit that perfect shot. It's kind of like a Hail Mary at the end of the fight. But at worst case scenario, you go down leaving no shock rifle in the hands of FaZe Clan as he spends that last round of ammo. Renegade rotating over the Repulsor. This is a change from Season 3 as well. Instead of a sword or a gravity hammer, Repulsor moved from blue pipes back to the island. So you see it less often in play. It's a little bit more of a commitment to rotate out to the island in order to pick up this resource. What can Renegade do with it? He sets up the assist. Yeah, just like going for swords before it got GA, you take yourself out of the play a little bit to go for that Repulsor. So you have to make sure the timing is there where none of your other teams or teammates are engaging in a gunfight. You almost want to slow down the pace for that five to ten second stretch let a guy like renegade go get that repulsor and then do work with it as 
He likes to really just hold down blue here for now. Doesn't have any players pushing him at blue, so he's not going to have a chance to really utilize that repulsor. And for Native White, recognizing maybe that he has that repulsor, this is a great strategy from them to play the long game. And now don't only three. Yeah, maybe that assist that came through earlier, there's the call out on the side of Native White that sees the repulsor attached to yep. his arm, attached to his wrist, and know to not push the top of control. But what they didn't there call is. out is watch your back, Gilkey, because footsteps might be harder to hear creeping up right behind you for the melee takedown. Oh, and, and Renegade there, maybe not aware that he had one more repulsor to use, slid over the camo, and I think maybe thought he had it, but no, he did not. He did not grab that, switch out the repulsor for camo. As instead, Repulsor goes into Barcode's hands. But I want to know who grabbed the camo instead. Going to be very important as we reach the almost halfway mark. This one's close. It might have gotten burned. I know Gilkey had a double kill right at the time that camo was coming up. So possibly burned that camo out of play. But more importantly, Gilkey's double kill, Barcode's takedown and survival. Now just two points from Native White as we are creeping up on this halfway point of the match. Gilkey's looking for more. He's setting up kills for teammates, hoping to get that kill to come through. He gets traded out. They're holding their ground. And now just a one point game. Barcode cleans up a kill. They're collecting collapsing on the final two players of phase frosty momentarily the only player for phase on that gold side he's now going to force spawns for phase on that side and potentially even a split with tapping buttons pushing up this far that should force a c spawn for royal two yes in fact he does get the c spawn and tapping buttons and gilkey both go down huge play off the back foot there for phase clan that's the test of the teams at this level is not how you play when you're ahead but how do you play when you're off on uh, when you're on your back foot when you're off of your pace or your style of play how do you adjust Double when things kill. are not going your way and right now that's all we're seeing is the back and forth four go down for phase clan native white they take the lead this squad is scrappy this squad is resilient this squad is led by one of the best halo players of all time mick win Coming out of retirement, wearing the 4-5 as four players are down total in this lobby. 2v2 scenario as Gilkey gets the better of Royal, excuse me, Frosty. And he's got a disruptor to work with as well. Oh my goodness, a potential pinch here. A lot of this base clan squad on the needles and elevator side. You've got McWoon grabbing camo. And I do believe in fact magic, the pinch is on. Pinch is on. Gilkey's holding on to Catwalk. There's two players here. He doesn't have any grenades. All he has is that repulsor. But what he's doing is he's setting up a distraction for Mickwin to rotate behind. Mickwin gets a couple opening rounds of damage. He gets the slays. He's looking for the double. He's going to get that opening damage and hope that Gilkey can get there in time. Snakebite survives with the use of a grapple to break line of sight, but it's only a survival for the time being. Mickwin's going to find the melee takedown. And would you look at the scoreboard? Native White now with a five point lead. Yeah, 27 to 26 was the first lead for Native White. Now they're up 36 to 31. Oh my goodness. Unbelievable here. When you consider the fact that FaZe Clan's so good in Slayers and looking so good in this game, but it was all for naught, not for long. Native White and McWin with that oh shock gosh. rifle, tapping buttons with a double kill. <laughs> and it looks like Native White at this point they could play their cheeky strategy trade out and really force some frustration here for phase tapping buttons has 10 kills and 10 assists oh. in this game leading triple the double. way for assists the triple double for tapping buttons as he's lurking at the back of c it's still a six point lead here for native white as gilkey is taken down you see native white adjusting their approach slowing down because they only need to hold this pace in order to get the win there could trade kills all day to come out with this clutch game five win and we've seen some clutch game five wins from native white before do we see another one here and in those clutch game five wins they were down six down eight down nine even but now they have the lead up six and again those next two kills are gonna almost determine the game either a one team wipe game or a two team wipe game yeah. as phase clan starts the scoring inching closer and closer to a one possession game in the end game i think camo just spawned in so these kills are even more crucial it's only a one possession game it's no now it's six make with a barcode each find a kill i think that mickwin's going for the camo play he's gonna get it he's gonna pop it activate it still holding on to that seven point
point lead and now just six points away from getting the win if he can stay alive and he even have a little bit of time left with this camo he's rapid firing the plasma pistol and he will take that trade all day all night Wow, 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 wow. This is unbelievable here from Native White after a game four where they lost Magic 250 to 55. And I posed the question. It almost looked like bait. It almost looked like Native White conceded that to almost like build up FaZe Clan uh, like an airhead. And now they got the needle and they're popping it. Two go down. One, excuse me, one down here for FaZe Clan. 39 47. Tapping buttons with the back smack on Frosty. Diminishing hope here for a comeback from FaZe Clan. Native White have looked so strong in the end game. Oh, and Barcode hits the perfect kill with a shock rifle, adding insult to injury. Just one away for Native White to clutch up the game five. And Mikwit's going to be the player to find the final kill. Is that a sigh of frustration or is that the air had been popped as FaZe are defeated in the game five upset from Native White? defeated and more importantly magic again on the mental side looking deflated there up by six seven eight up by considerable multi-possession game there in the game five team slayer a team like phase clan they always take that home they always go the distance they always get the win but here we have native white instead and all oh, count another one on the board for lvt halo predicting native white Clearly, they're, we're in cahoots with HCS. Clearly, we got the script because every time Native White has their back against the wall against the superior, quote-unquote, seated team, they find a way to win.